Harris County resident, but I'm here representing Gun Owners of America, which has over 2 million uh, gun owners uh, being represented. I want to address some concerns that we have with the governor's budget proposal, but please let me first provide some context. Over the past couple of months, 86 out of the 95 counties in this state have sent a message that is loud and clear to the governor and to the legislature. They have stated in unison, we do not want unconstitutional restrictions that are being pushed by the governor and by many in the legislature. And they certainly don't want the gun confiscation, which on November 6th, the governor said that he was willing to consider and entertain. So given these threats, over 90% of Virginia's counties have declared themselves to be Second Amendment sanctuaries. And they have done so while thousands upon thousands of Virginians have showed up at these events in record numbers. Nevertheless, we see in the governor's proposed budget on page 23 that he is requesting $4 million and 18 new law enforcement positions to enforce a ban on commonly owned firearms. Now these are guns that are currently legal in Virginia and legal in households all across the country. Since then, the governor has backtracked. He said he supports grandfathering any banned guns and registering them instead. Well, here's the problem. We've seen in states like New York and California that registration is just a first step to gun confiscation later. The governor is also requesting another $3.5 million to enforce gun control that has not been passed by the legislature and is not even current law in Virginia. I'm talking about infringements like universal background registration, one gun a month rationing, so-called red flag gun confiscation orders. So we have some questions in relation to this. First of all, why is the governor requesting millions of dollars to enforce gun control that is not even on the books? Could he be planning to use that money to enforce his gun control agenda through executive order? And given that possibility, would you as legislators be willing to support a budget amendment preventing him from doing that? That's right. Also, there's a Democrat congressman in this state who has talked about using the National Guard to enforce gun control. So our question is, would you support a budget amendment prohibiting the governor from being able to do that? I have other questions too, and I will submit them in written testimony, but I want to end with this observation. Churchgoers in Texas showed us how to stop evil. A good guy with a gun did what gun control can never do, and that is to physically stop a bad guy who is trying to commit murder. So with this in mind, please stand for the rights that are protected in the Virginia and U.S. constitutions and do not fund the governor's request for gun control. Thank you. Constitution and the Virginia Constitution. That's 
Right. These people come from all walks of life. They're your neighbors, your children's teachers and coaches, the people who fix your car, mow your grass, and even your pastors, doctors, and dentists. They live here in Manassas, the cities, the suburbs, the mountains, and all over the rest of the Commonwealth. In the past couple of months, well over 100 counties and municipalities have adopted resolutions to become Second Amendment sanctuaries or constitutional counties. Some counties are even organizing militias. This movement is not something that is being driven by the quote unquote gun lobby, right. as some in the media have reported. It is individuals talking with their families, neighbors, and co-workers, saying they will not have their God-given rights, their civil rights, taken from them, and then going to the counties to speak for them as a unified voice to Richmond, saying this is not what we, the people of the Commonwealth, want. I will tell you to look at the state flag and see what it represents. Sick, separatianus, thus, always the tyrants. I will leave you with this thought. What does thus mean on that flag? Many Virginians know what it means and believe it wholeheartedly. Thomas Jefferson know, knew what it meant and took action upon it. He also wrote that, quote, if a law is unjust, a man is not only right to disobey it, he is obligated to do so. Many years later, Martin Luther King Jr. wrote similarly in his letter from Birmingham jail that, quote, one has a moral responsibility to disobey unjust laws. And in the end, like all of us, you will be held accountable by God. So to conclude, here are my comments on funding these bills. I and many of my fellow Virginians do not want to be taxed millions of dollars to provide support to your unconstitutional laws, that you will take away our God-given rights and provide additional resources to arrest and incarcerate people like me who are law-abiding citizens. The governor and many elected officials know where they can find funding for their illegal activities from the same people who have funneled billions of dollars into Virginia's elections, Thanks, George Soros and Michael Bloomberg. Thank you for your time. Now go and do what you know to do the right thing. Deny this funding that will be illegal and oppose these unconstitutional bills when the General Assembly is in session in the coming weeks.